Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. <clears throat> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, as many people know, I graduated um, in May of 2020 amongst all the quarantine corona business. Um, and that really did mess up my plans for graduation, law school, all that. Anywho, today I was going to weigh the... I wanted to share what law school I'm going to pick and how I came to that decision. So I'm not going to announce it till like the end. So, um, yeah. So first, let me tell you guys about kind of my journey to law school. So... Uh, I've known I wanted to be a lawyer for a really long time, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to repeat my personal statement. Um, but I ultimately decided when I came to college, I was going to major in political science and minor in English. Um, I hated my major, but stuck with it because, you know, you got to graduate. Um, so I started, I went to a LSEC, Law School Admissions Council, um, Discover Law Day at the University of Alabama where I um, got a little bit more information about what law school is like. Um, that's in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I got more information about what law school is like, um, what to expect as a lawyer, all the different types of law, and then we got to talk to some law students um, and then some recent graduates from the University of Alabama. It was really nice. And then they told us about this program um, that you could do in the summers. Um, called the plus program and it's the pre-law undergraduate scholars program so that semester I applied and I got accepted to that program um, and me and a couple people from A&M went uh, learned so much about the study of law um, we took these mock law classes did these essays did a lot of we learned how to um, brief cases um with the crack method or the iraq method or whatever it's a lot of stuff and um so yeah that was it was really great learned a lot went on a couple field trips went to some courtrooms um practiced and did an oral argument had all these group projects it was really intense and i was really stressed and tired from the first day to the last day and i was like oh, okay well that's what law school is going to be like but on a hundred so it basically lets you know it gives you like an insight on what law school is and uh, kind of lets you know like this is what it is just in case this isn't really what you're looking for like if you just want to be a politician or if you want to be like a community organizer or you want to be a lobbyist please pick a different option because law school is really really hard and so I did all that and I was like I love it I love it and I want to do it for the rest of my life not law school but the study of law so, yep, that was summer 2018. Um, fast forward, um, they also pay for, well, they give you a waiver. The Law School Admissions Council gives you a waiver for two law school admission tests, the LSAT, and um, they give you a book, an LSAC, um, LSAT study book. And uh, what else did they give us? Oh, and then they, they waive your CAS fee, which is the fee that you have to put all, well, the, it's the CAS is the system where you have to put all of your transcripts, your letters of recommendation, um, your LSAT scores, all that in, and then it sends it to each um, school that you apply to. So they waive those fees. So that made this process way easier because <laughs> I don't come from money. So, yes. Um, so fast forwarding. Um, I started studying for my LSAT. They recommend that you familiarize yourself with it um, around your junior year and start intensive studying three months before your first date. And that means studying anywhere from 20 to 30 plus hours a week. Um, I'm not going to lie, I never did that. Now, I am a pretty decent test taker, so I was like, you know, I'm a study, I'm a study, I'm a study. But I had a lot going on. I got married. Um, 
I ran for a student government association president and then I had a lot of mess at my undergrad with that. So that took a, a large toll on me. And I just, then I worked several jobs. I just never really got around to studying the way I wanted to. Let me not lie, I didn't want to study. Um, I did. I chose not to cut out time to study and I believe that my test scores reflected it. So I knew that I had two and maybe that also made me take it for granted because I didn't actually pay for them. But on the first one I made a 152. I wasn't mad um, but I was like okay great the next one I'll get in the 160s. And so I took it the first time. September yeah because it was during curl fest September of 2019 and I had all intentions on taking it again I think in November or December and then having that um and then applying um before the before 2020 I just wasn't prepared to take it again so I didn't register until for it until the January test And then I was in all English classes all year because I kind of compressed all of my minor classes together in one. And so with all the writing and the reading that I was doing, and I'm not a very good reader, and I had a job or two jobs, I was so stressed out. I didn't study again. And this time I was like, well, whatever happens, happens. And this is the, I was one of the first test takers to take it on the digital test in September. And then again in January and I really wasn't nervous and that probably was the problem because I did worse I'm not even gonna tell you what I made but the fact that I did worse than the 152 I was a little disappointed but then I was like well I'm not taking it again because I'm not gonna pay for it so I'm going to apply to wherever I can get in my goal was North Carolina Central University um, which is a illustrious HBCU in North Carolina um, in Durham which is near Chapel Hill um, okay wait between those LSATs I went to um, LSAC forum in Atlanta I took two of my mentees and friends Kennedy and Jaden and uh, we sat in on a couple sessions um, and then we went to a law school fair and we ate and then we drove back to Huntsville it was really fun learned a lot of information and I thought it was good to take them um, I tried to take more people but we didn't have a pre-law advisor at Alabama A&M because he left so if he's watching this I'm still mad at you but yeah so that's that um but we learned a lot um, I got to talk to a lot of the professionals there. I talked to people from University of Arizona. I talked to this really cocky man from Arizona State, which really made me not want to apply there because he kept telling me how bad University of Arizona was compared to him, and I didn't like that because I didn't want to go to school in, in Phoenix anyway. I wanted to go to school in Tucson. Um, so leaving there, I had formulated like my top six schools list with a couple extras and I said six which is a lot for law schools if you're applying it's really expensive I would shoot in the three to six range no more than that pick some schools on the law school calculator that's on the LSAC website just insert your GPA and your test scores and it'll kind of tell you what schools you are more likely to get in and go based off of that um, but the fee waiver pays for six so I did six and if you think you qualify for a waiver you can still apply for one but um, so that's where I got my top six and those were um, Alabama Arizona oh god North Carolina Central Howard is that four and then I had two more and I just never really knew what other two I was gonna pick so I just was like, well, when I get around to it, I'll pick something. Of course, I wanted something that was close to my family and friends. Um, my husband's still an undergrad at Alabama A&M, which is in North Alabama, Huntsville. So I was like, I don't want to be too far because it's going to be a year and a half away from him until he graduates. So I'm going to tell you guys what 
I still didn't finish my story. So then, um, basically, I had this issue with my community college that I went to for summer classes. And they could not submit my transcript online because they do not have electronic transcript services. And I could not get in contact with them because Miss Rona started acting a fool. So that was a big thing. It took me forever to um, basically they just never sent it. They never sent it by mail. They they just never sent it. So I had to do an unofficial transcript and they never do that. And they worked it out for me and they had to change something on my application or whatever. I didn't even get those two classes which were A's counted into my GPA which pissed me off a little bit. But um, I finally got it done. Turn on me, suck. But then um, by the time I got all of that completed, North Carolina Central's deadline had passed. Howard's deadline had passed. As well as many other schools. Was I bummed? Very much so. Because I had my mind set on raising my family and being barred in North Carolina um that was really where I had my mindset but I knew not to put all my eggs in one basket because I did that with undergrad and end up being freaking depressed because I couldn't go to Howard long story short my life ended up great at A&M so glad I went but I didn't get bummed out that North Carolina Central wouldn't let me apply because it was way past their deadline so I just picked more schools. Um, I knew I wanted to have some HBCUs on my list and some PWIs. So uh, don't judge me. It was June when I applied. I know it's still June right now, but it was June when I applied. And that is really late. But luckily for me, people started extending their deadlines because of Corona. Praise God. Um, I always apply to schools late. Please don't be like me. But I applied to, this is where I end up applying. Alabama, Arizona, Georgia, University of all these, University of Alabama, University of Arizona, University of Georgia, um, Thurgood Marshall School of Law in Texas Southern, um, Atlanta's John Marshall School Law School, and FAMU. So FAMU and Texas Southern were my only, I mean Thurgood Marshall were my only two HBCUs, and the other four of course are either PWIs or I don't know. They're not really minority serving institutions. I don't know what you call them. Not, not HBCUs. Oh, my phone. I'm talking really fast because I don't want this video to be super long. Anywho, so, um, within a week or two of applying to both Atlanta's John Marshall um, School of Law and to Thurgood Marshall's Law School, I received acceptances and I received scholarship offers and I was like stop me that was really fast so that made me really excited and um, I of course have a good relationship with the University of Alabama so I was like okay let me let them know um, one that I submitted my application so they can get back to me so I let my little person to contact know and he's in a position of power or whatever. So he was like, okay, girl, I got you. Just, um, I, I saw your application. So um, give us a minute and we'll look over it. So I was like, yay. Um, so then when I got the other offers and you have to pay a deposit, like a $500 deposit as of 2020 on your law school seat, which is just like securing your spot. And of course, school's getting ready to start in August so you have to like submit that stuff now so they can get you in classes get you a schedule all that crap finalize all their stuff you know so I was like oh gosh so I had um for Atlanta John Marshall I had until tomorrow to accept my seat and for Thurgood Marshall I have until Monday so what am I gonna do I don't know let's see so I made a list of pros and cons for both schools and I'll kind of go through them. Um, I also prayed about this situation 
this is a super big decision for my life because wherever I decide to go to law school me and my husband are going to move there permanently for the time being until God tells us to get up and go somewhere else so it's a pretty big decision I talked to my mom I talked to my dad I talked to my husband I talked to Jesus I talked to my friends who are very excited and supportive and um i've already come to a decision but i'm still gonna go through my list so you guys can see how i decided so the pros for um who should we do first let's do atlanta's john marshall so there well i'll just tell you this their semesterly costs is twenty two thousand dollars and that's a lot so per semester, $22,065 as of 2020. Ooh, they're a private school, so, you know, there's no out-of-state or in-state. It's all one one um, cost. But they gave me a scholarship for $15,000 a semester. Mm. So that means that my leftover would be $7,065. And that includes, like, all their fees and stuff is included in that. And law school is very expensive by the way but when you do your financial aid you usually get um what do you call it they give you award packages that cover your entire cost of living so you don't have to work and they recommend that you don't work your first year of law school um oh another pro so it's from montgomery that's where i'm from montgomery alabama it's two hours from montgomery downtown Atlanta to Montgomery is two hours away from home and it's four hours from Huntsville where my husband goes to school and that's a drive so we're gonna do this long distance thing like driving four hours for a weekend like this that's decent like we could do that like every other weekend um but the cost of living in Atlanta is ridiculous uh, especially since you don't want to really have to commute that far or pay for parking every time you go to school because the school is in downtown the cost of living there is just it's astronomical um to be in georgia and if you're not familiar with georgia see because i'm familiar with with the south ain't nothing in georgia just atlanta and the beach maybe making decatur but it's nothing there so i think it's too much to be living in georgia um but a pro is that i have family that lives in atlanta and surrounding areas so that's another thing like my uncle and I, uncle huey and Aunt deb live there my cousin Devin, my cousin aisha lives not too far from there and her kids so yeah if i needed something like i could get to my family really quick um a con is that it's um, not a minority serving institution. Now it does have a large number of black people. So if you wanna to go to a law school that's not an HBCU but still wanna be around a lot of black people, that's a really good option. But to me, that's a con. You, you weren't made for me. I don't know what to tell you, I, it, it's a con. Um, and the last con was that it's in Atlanta. I really don't wanna go, like I don't wanna, live in Atlanta but it's so close to home and there's so many black people there's so many black people at this school last year they graduated like 55 black people or 55 white people to 50 black people and then you know some others but that's a lot like for law school do you know that black lawyers make up like five percent of lawyers in the United States and that's not a lot at all it's the least diverse profession so the fact that they graduate that many like I'd love to see it. Um, so, for Thurgood Marshall, let's see. Um, so, their total cost of tuition a semester is only $14,000, which is like, that's not bad at all. $14,300 for out of state. So, if you live in Texas, it's way cheaper than that. Um, it's a public school, so you know there's out of state and in state tuition but i got a scholarship for half off tuition so that would leave me at seven thousand dollars a semester that's the same thing from atlanta's john marshall it's about the same tuition 
two different scholarships, same cost. What am I gonna do? Um, but Houston, Texas is 10 hours from Huntsville and like eight hours from Montgomery. Do you know if I want to see my husband on the weekend, he gonna have to drive 10 hours? 10? Do you know how often I'm gonna be able to see him if he gotta drive 10 hours and he got a job and he goes to college? That's ridiculous. 10 hours. Now it would only be for a year and a half and then we would have to still have the rest of our lives. But that's a long year. That's gonna be a lonely year. Mm. Um. Oh, but the cost of living. So the cost of living, eh, it's a pro and a con. So it's cheaper than Atlanta, but it's way more expensive than living in Alabama. So I'm gonna have to adjust my shopping, my grocery habits, my eating out habits. Do I really wanna do that? No. Gas costs more. Apartments, girl, do y'all know how much I pay for my apartment? In Huntsville, I pay $500. I paid four seventy five and rent five hundred dollars with water. They apartments like nine hundred to twelve hundred dollars for a one bedroom. One, not a fan, not a fan, not a fan. Um, but some of the pros, it's an HBCU. Period. I'm I'm pro HBCU all the way. I just I don't know what it is about it. Like black people. Um, I think they were, but they were still really diverse. They were like seventy percent or 70 plus something percent black and they got more women than men <laughs> um it's a tmcf member school and if you don't know what tmcf is it's actually the thurgood marshall college fund which no affiliation to um thurgood marshall law school but they serve um public hbcus similarly to united negro college fund but that's for private schools but for public schools they give them scholarships internship opportunities co-op opportunities um all these opportunities apple scholars program hennessy um scholars i got a scholarship from them my sophomore year of college and got a refund check was like that oh i had a lot of money that year um it's a oh a pro. It's not in Mississippi, Alabama, or Georgia. I grew up in Alabama my whole life. I'm ready to get the heck out of there. And it is still in the South. So I can wear my cowboy boots and people won't talk about me, but it's not in one of those three nasty states. It's closer to my brother and his wife and his daughter and I mean it's still like 15 hours away, but it's better than being 26 hours away, which is how far they live because them niggas moved to Arizona. Um, and then um, I got accepted into this special program. It's like one of their dean things, program things. And that was really nice. Um, I got a personal invitation. Um, I don't know very much about it, but I do think that it was an excellent honor. And then their dean of admissions called me personally on my cell phone to accept me. So I thought that was also really nice. Um, long story short, where did I choose to go to school? Drum roll please. I guess it deep in my heart, I'll always be a Texas girl. I wanna go home. to the Thurgood Marshall School of Law. I'm gonna be a Houston hottie like Megan Thee Stallion. I'm going to be a very smart Texan lawyer. I'm gonna wear my cowboy boots and yeehaw all the day long. So yeah, I'm really excited. So, be looking forward to law school videos um i'll try to keep you guys as informed as i can um 
this is gonna be a crazy ride i'm gonna move to houston uh in the next month or so so yay i hate talking on my channel because i sound so country but if you guys enjoyed this video please make sure that you subscribe that you comment and that you like this video and be sure to follow me on instagram at not even name and tell me congratulations in the comments that would be really nice Thanks for watching.